Okay, guys, just want to go through your study guide with you, okay? Um, to get you ready for your test, please make sure that you look through every single one of these questions and you work through um, every single part, okay? I don't want you to miss anything, so here you go. All right, question number one says, state the horizontal asymptote for each of the following functions. And then in bold letters, it says, please note, this is not a multiple choice question. Okay, I have A, B, C, D, E, but these are not answer choices, okay? It wants you to tell what the asymptote is going to be for every single one of those. Well, the little mnemonic device that we taught you in order to remember this is Bobo Bots Eats DC. If it's bigger on bottom, y equals zero. If it's bigger on top, it's going to be a slant. But this is only by one degree. Okay? If it's more than one degree, we're just simply going to state that there is no horizontal asymptote. And then the last part of this, eats DC, exponents are the same, divide coefficients. All right, so what we're going to do first, we are going to look at the exponents of my numerator and denominator, the highest exponent. Well, this is a 1 and this is a 1. So right here, we see that our exponents are the same. So if that happens, I'm going to divide my coefficients. The coefficients here are 2 and 1. So y equals 2 over 1, 2 divided by 1. So y equals 2. That will be the horizontal asymptote for the equation for problem A. Okay? Problem B. I do not have anything written here, but... I understand that there is an unwritten x to the 0 power. So if I compare my powers, I have 0 on the top and I have 2 on the bottom. I see that it is bigger on the bottom, so that means y equals 0 for my horizontal asymptote. Okay, next, part c, I have... 3x squared, and on the bottom I have x plus 3. Well, that x has an understood exponent of 1, okay? So right here, if it is bigger on the top, bigger on top, and it is only by 1 degree, then I will have a slant asymptote. So I'm just going to say y equals a slant. I'm not going to ask you to tell me what the equation of that is. Just simply state that it is a slant. Okay? Alright, D. My exponent in the numerator is 1. My exponent in the denominator is 2. I see that it is bigger on the bottom. So again, I have y equals 0. Okay? All right, and then part E, the last one for question number one. I have negative 4x to the fifth over x cubed. Now, it's bigger on the top, but it's by more than one degree. It's actually two degrees higher in the numerator than the denominator. So what I'm going to say here is that there is no horizontal asymptote. So you can just simply state none, okay? All right, question number two. State the domain and the range of the given graph. I don't have an equation for my line, and that's okay because I'm already given the picture. And if you look very carefully, you already have these asymptotes, okay? So right here, I always say that my domain is all real numbers, 
but then I have to state whatever restrictions are there. Well, I'm looking from left to right, and I see that there is a break in my graph right here when x is 3. So I'm going to state that my domain is all real numbers when x is not equal to 3. Then I'm going to do the same thing for my range. I'm very quickly going to write all real numbers, but I've got to restrict my y values. I see that there is no y coordinate right here when there's this horizontal dashed line, and that is when my y value is 1. So y cannot equal 1. Okay? All right, next, number three. What are the x-intercepts of the graph? Okay, so what I need to do right here, I need to remember that I am going to set my numerator equal to zero, and I'm going to solve. So right here, if I bring my numerator over to the side, I'm very quickly going to see if I can factor this equation. So if I factor this, I should get x plus 4 and x minus 3 equals 0. This is where I would break each one apart and set it equal to 0, okay? So solving for x, I get x equals negative 4, and here, x equals positive 3. But if I'm finding the x-intercepts, I want to be very careful and write them with the proper notation. The way that I have them listed right now, these are vertical lines. These are not vertical asymptotes. What I need to do I'm going to write them as ordered pairs. I have the ordered pair negative four, zero, and I have the ordered pair three, zero. Okay? All right, then the last one on this first page, okay? It says identify the domain and the range of the given graph below. I'm going to treat this problem just like I did number two. I want to look very carefully from left to right, and I want to know what restrictions there are for x. I see this dashed vertical line right here at negative three. I also see another dashed vertical line at positive three. So that is my domain, my range all real numbers, but y cannot equal, if I look from bottom to top, it's really hard to see, but I do want you to notice that there is a dashed line here on the x-axis, so that would mean that y cannot equal zero, okay? I jumped ahead of myself a little bit. There is, the graph is approaching the x-axis, but it's never actually going to touch it, okay? All right, here we go. Let's look at question number five. Question number five says, state the vertical asymptotes and the holes for the graph of f of x, okay? So right here, the very first thing that I need to remember is that my holes come when I cancel something. If I look over here, I see that on the top and the bottom of my function, I have an x minus one that I can cancel out. So I'm going to take x minus one, and I'm gonna set that equal to zero and solve for x. I will have a hole when the x value is positive one. My leftover function is x minus four over x minus five. 
So what I need to do with this value, I'm gonna take it and I'm going to plug it back into my function. One minus four over one minus five. I took this x value and I substituted it back into my function anywhere I saw an x. One minus four is negative three and one minus five is negative four. Well, I know that I need to simplify this. Negative three divided by negative four is positive three fourths. So that is the y value of the whole. Now the vertical asymptotes come from any expression that is left in the denominator of my function. Well, I have x minus five, and if I set that equal to zero, that's going to give me x equals five. That, <coughs> excuse me, that is my vertical asymptote. Okay, so those are the two things that I'm looking for there. Number six, describe the holes for the graph of the rational function f of x. Well, again, right here, I'm looking for where things cancel out, and I had an x minus six on the top and the bottom. All right, so if I cross everything out up top, I have to remember that there's a one left up there. So that's one over x plus five. That is my leftover function, okay? So what I'm going to do, I am going to take my x minus six, and I'm going to set it equal to zero, and I'm gonna solve for x. That gives me a hole where the x value is positive six. Well, I need to know what my y value is. So I'm gonna take this, and I'm going to plug it back into my leftover function. So f of six equals one over six plus five. Well, six plus five is 11. So my fraction is one over 11. Okay, now I'm not asking you to graph anything. I just simply wanted you to find the whole of the function. It's okay to have fractions, okay? So please don't think that you were wrong. Number seven. State the equation of the horizontal asymptote of f of x. Again, I'm back to where I compare my exponents in the numerator and the denominator. The exponents are two and two, so that means my exponents are the same. I'm going to divide my coefficients. So y equals five, which is right here, over one. Well, I know that five over one is simply equal to five. That is my horizontal asymptote, okay? All right, number eight. State the domain and the range of the function. So right here, in order to do the domain and the range, I need to quickly calculate any vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes. Okay, the vertical asymptotes come from the denominator. So if I set x minus four equal to zero and solve for x, that is my vertical asymptote. And then my horizontal asymptote, I'm going to compare the exponents. x to the first power, x to the first power. I'm going to divide my coefficients, which is one over one. Well, one divided by one is one. Whatever these values are affect my domain and my range. My domain. I will always say that my domain is all real numbers. But here, I have to restrict the x value of four. That came from my vertical asymptote, okay? And then my range, again, I'm going to state all real numbers 
but it is restricted by my horizontal asymptote right there. Okay, so I stated the domain and the range of the given function. All right, number nine, state the y-intercept of the function. I know what my y-intercept is when I plug in zero for x. Zero squared minus 25 over zero squared plus zero minus 20. I know that all of this right here is just simply gonna give me negative 25, and then all of this is going to disappear as well, and I've got negative 20. The negatives cancel each other out, so I end up with a positive, and then here I've got a common factor of five that I can divide out to simplify. That gives me positive five over positive four. So my y-intercept has the coordinates zero, five fourths. Or you could write it as a decimal if you wanted to, which would be zero, 1.25. Either one of these are fine and you would receive full credit for both, okay? All right, next, number 10. It says, which function has vertical asymptotes at x equals negative one and x equals two? That asks me to look at each one of these functions and pick the one that these two things would be what I would get from my denominators, okay? Now, very quickly, I am going to take this x equals negative one and this x equals two, and I am going to move each one of those values back over with the x so that I know what the factor should be in the denominator when I simplify my function, okay? So what I should be looking for is when my denominator has x plus one and x minus two in the bottom, and nothing cancels out, okay? I do not want anything to cancel these two things out. So let's start with answer choice A, okay? On the very top, the factors of negative two that add up to give me positive one are positive two and negative one. This bottom expression factors into x minus two and x plus one. Okay, well that looks very much like what I just said that I needed to find. I need to check and make sure that nothing cancels out. There is nothing on the top or the bottom that look exactly the same. So I do know that this function will give me what I need, okay? Now, just to kind of show you what to expect on your test, it might not be answer choice A. I might have had to do a couple of more problems just to make sure, okay? Now, if I am looking right here at um, answer choice B, the numerator factors into x plus four and x minus two, and right here, the bottom, it's the exact same denominator that I had for answer choice A, so it factors the same way, x minus two and x plus one. But look right here, okay? What happens is this x minus two and that x minus two cancel out, so there would not be a vertical asymptote right here. Okay, next, over here, this top one factors into x minus two and x plus one over, hey, it's the same thing, x minus two and x plus one. So everything cancels out 
And that leaves me with this whole thing being equal to one. That certainly does not give me vertical asymptotes at these two values. And then the last piece right here. The factors of negative four that add up to negative three are negative four and positive one. And then here on the bottom, I've got x minus two and x plus one. I'm comparing. I've got an x plus one in the top and the bottom that would cancel. So that one is also not going to give me the asymptotes that I need, okay? All right, so here we go. On to the graphing. All right, my calculator is my best friend when it comes to graphing these rational functions, okay? So what I'm going to do, I am going to type in my calculator. I'm gonna turn it on, I'm gonna clear out anything that's there. I am going to put my information in the calculator. I have negative x plus two in the numerator, and I have x minus four in the denominator. And I'm gonna quickly graph that. Okay, so I see the picture, and I'm gonna use that to help me. Okay, so putting this to the side for just a second, I did not have anything that canceled out. So I'm going to state that there are no holes, okay? My vertical asymptotes come from what's left in the denominator. So if I quickly set x minus four equal to zero, I get that there is a vertical asymptote at x equals four. That affects my domain. So I'm very quickly going to state that my domain is all real numbers, but my x value is not allowed to equal four. Okay? All right, my horizontal asymptotes. This is where I compare my exponents. Bobobots eats DC. My exponents are both one. My leading coefficients are negative one and positive one. So y equals negative one divided by positive one. My horizontal asymptote is at x equals, excuse me, not x equals, y equals negative one. So that affects my range. My y values are not allowed to be negative one. Okay, my x-intercepts come from when I set the numerator equal to zero. So if I set the numerator equal to zero and I start solving for x, I get negative x equals negative two and I'm gonna divide by negative one. So I get x equals positive two but I wanna remember that I wanna write it as an ordered pair, okay? And then the last characteristic that I'm gonna ask you to find is when is the y-intercept. So I'm gonna take my function and I am going to plug in zero anywhere I see an x. So that would be zero plus two over zero minus four. Well, zero plus two is two. Zero minus four is negative four. And this reduces to negative one half. So my ordered pair is zero, negative one half. Okay? So now it comes to the graphing part. I am going to take all of this information that I have right here and I'm going to go ahead and plot it on my coordinate plane. I know that I will have a vertical asymptote of four. X equals four. So I'm gonna come draw in the dashed line. I know that my horizontal asymptote is going to be at negative one.
I'm going to have an x-intercept at 2, 0. I'm going to go ahead and plot that. And then I have a y-intercept at 0, negative 1 half. Okay. So, having all of that, I want to finish sketching my graph. Now, I do not mean just throw some curves on here. I need to see some specific points being plotted. I understand that our curves will not be perfect. However, it's important that we get as much as we can on here, okay? So I'm gonna go to my table. I'm gonna do second graph. And mine just happened to pop up here when X is four. And I'm seeing the error, okay? At 3.5, I have an ordered pair of 3.5, 3. So I'm going to come plot that point. At 3, I have 1. At 2.5, now I don't have to plot all this stuff, okay? I'm just doing a little bit for you right here. All right, I've got 1 third. Then I already plotted my x-intercept. Let's see, one, negative one-third. I'm just gonna estimate that right there. I don't see anything very, very pretty, except right here, negative four, negative 0.75. So I'm gonna come and sketch this. I'm just gonna draw the curve that way. And then I'm gonna go back to where my horizontal, not my horizontal, my vertical asymptote was, where my error is, and I'm going to plot some of these points on the other side of it. So I have 4.5, negative 5. I have 5, negative 3. I have 6, negative 2. I have 8, negative 1.5. Now that's enough for me. I see enough of my curve to just sketch it in. This is my expectation for your curves, okay? Please make sure that you are plotting points and using those as guidelines, okay? All right, next, let's look at number 12, okay? I'm only going to get you started in regards to finding your characteristics. When you type this original function into your calculator, please make sure you go to the table to plot the rest of your points, okay? I am looking at the top function and I see a lot of stuff, okay? But what I do notice is that every single term has an X. So if I take out a GCF of X, that leaves me with X squared, plus 2x minus 3 on the top. And then I have the same thing on the bottom. If I take out a GCF of x, that leaves me with x squared plus x minus 2. Okay? Now, I want to see if I can factor either one of these anymore. I still have the x. The factors of negative 3 that give me positive 2 when I add are x plus 3 and x minus 1. And then on the bottom, my factors here of negative 2 that add to give me 1 are x plus 2 and x minus 1. Okay? Now what I am seeing right here Okay, is that I have x plus 3 and x minus 1 on the top. And on the bottom, I have this x plus 2 and x minus 1 on the bottom. Just doing mental math, checking myself very quickly. Okay, the x minus 1s are going to cancel. But that's not the only thing that I have alike. I also have these x's that can cancel. Okay? So right here, if I set that equal to zero and I set this equal to zero, 
that is going to give me the coordinates for my holes, okay? So right here, I don't have any work to do. Right here, I need to add one to both sides. I am going to have a hole when x is zero and when x is one, okay? So I'm going to rewrite my simplified function. With all that stuff canceled out, I have x plus three over x plus two. So to find the whole, you simply plug these numbers in one at a time. Zero plus three is three, zero plus two is two. So that means that my y coordinate for that whole is three halves, which is the same thing as the decimal 1.5, okay? Now, if I plug in one, one plus three is four, one plus two is three. So this is the ordered pair one, four thirds. I can come plot both of those over here on my coordinate plane. Zero, 1.5, that happens to be on the y axis. Okay, and then I also have one, four thirds. So that is about one and a third. So right about in there. Okay, now my vertical asymptotes come from anything that's left over in the denominator. If I take this x plus two, which is my denominator and set it equal to zero, that is going to give me my vertical asymptote. My vertical asymptote has a line, x equals negative two, and I am going to come plot that on my coordinate plane. That vertical asymptote affects my domain. My x values are not allowed to equal negative two. Okay? Now for my horizontal asymptote, I'm going to go back to my original function and I'm going to compare my numerators. I have x cubed and x cubed. Those exponents are the same. So I'm going to divide my coefficients. Y equals one. So I'm gonna come and I'm going to sketch that in on my coordinate plane. And that value affects the range. So Y cannot equal one, okay? The X intercept, okay? Whatever is left over in my numerator, if I set x plus three equal to zero and I solve for x, I get x equals negative three. So that's going to be the ordered pair, negative three, zero. I can come plot that, okay? Now, right here, my y-intercept, if I take my simplified function and I plug in zero, okay? If I plug in zero, that right there gives me zero plus three and zero plus two, which I already found to be three halves, okay? But at three, zero three halves, there was a hole. So because there is a hole, there is no overlap there and I'm simply going to say None, okay? Now, that's it for that question other than typing your function into your calculator and sketching your graph. Now, I see if I have this stuff over here, there's probably gonna be a little curve this way. And then if I have a point right here, there's probably gonna be a curve right here. All right, for the very last question down here on number 13, this right here is going to count as bonus. Okay, you will be turning in your study guide on Thursday, so please make sure that your study guide is complete. If you would like some bonus points, please feel free to attempt question number 13, and we will check it and give you some bonus points. I hope this is helpful. Have a great day.